so thank you very much, Peter. A little uh, introduction uh, about myself initially. Um, so uh, I'm here from uh, Austria. I grew up about uh, uh, one hour outside of Vienna, but uh, I uh, studied in the United States a uh, long time, longer time ago than I uh, care to admit. And um, I was working after that with uh, Schlumberger. It's uh, uh, nothing to do with uh, with the wine, but it's a, a technology company, an oil company, an oil service company, a global company for um, oil service. Uh, I was with uh, drilling operations, and uh, the uh, people are more familiar with the competition, which is uh, uh, Weatherford or uh, Halliburton or uh, Baker Hughes. Uh, but uh, Schlumberger is uh, the main global player. I was there for more than 10 years and uh, in my last position in the uh, digital transformation team. And uh, based out of that, I uh, became uh, independent as a, a consultant with uh, uh, QHSC Data Analytics. It stands for uh, Quality, Health, Safety and Environment. And uh, I offer uh, services in uh, data science consulting in uh, these topics, so uh, industrial processes, uh, not uh, much what we, everybody hears about uh, data science for uh, uh, marketing or social media, I'm uh, not doing much with that, I'm mostly focused on uh, industrial applications and uh, heavy industry. <coughs> and um, since last year I'm uh, part of the Alpha Zeta network, uh, it's the network of uh, independent uh, uh, analytics experts. And uh, it's uh, kind of to think about like the Uber for data science. So uh, an alternative to the big uh, consulting companies, Deloitte, McKinsey, and so on. It's a more uh, uh, leaner organization, and uh, which has uh, several benefits. So it's uh, possible to do uh, more flexible projects, as well as uh, for me as a, uh, a data science uh, consultant, it allows me to tackle uh, larger projects with the help of this, uh, uh, with the support of this uh, organization. And um, since uh, last year we have started, I'm mostly involved with the uh, Alpha Zeta Academy, which is um, uh, running uh, courses for uh, uh, corporate courses uh, about uh, introduction to AI and introduction to data science for, uh, for managers. Okay, so these are uh, two-day courses, which um, are not going to make you an expert, but uh, the aim is to uh, get decision makers and managers uh, closer to the topic of data science and uh, foster the understanding uh, how does it work and uh, what it's good for. And uh, I'm uh, very happy about this initiative because uh, this type of education I normally have to do anyway as part of a project, okay? Uh, and now we have a formal way of, uh, of doing this, okay? And uh, so, uh, and, uh, the, uh, this is uh, the concept of uh, data literacy that I want to introduce to you today. So, uh, what is uh, data literacy? We can all agree that we are working in a period of uh, rapid technological change, okay? Uh, you have probably seen this graph or a similar graph which shows uh, technology uh, adoption, okay? And we can see that uh, uh, one, technology is being adopted uh, faster and faster, okay? So uh, before it took uh, the telephone about uh, 100 years to reach uh, adoption. Um, TV was already on 50 years, okay? And uh, the new technologies computers, cell phones, smartphones, they are getting adopted much, much faster, okay? So that's uh, one thing. The other thing that we see is uh, we are getting more and more new technologies, okay? So the rate of uh, technology development and technology adoption is, uh, is increasing, okay? And uh, so this has uh, a lot of uh, consequences, okay, uh, which is Nothing, which has nothing to do with uh, technology, but with each technology comes also a social change, a cultural adoption of this uh, type of technology, okay? And uh, we have, we are getting accustomed to new technologies, which was not always the norm, okay? So uh, before you needed an uh, expert for everything, okay? 
they thought uh, Ford Motor Company would not, you know, uh, become so big. Why? Because they thought there wouldn't be enough drivers, you know, to support driving all the cars. Okay, so uh, we had dedicated, uh, uh, dedicated car operators. Okay, we had dedicated uh, telephone operators. Today, everybody is a telephone operator. Okay, not like uh, we were uh, 50 years ago, but uh, we are. Uh, 50 years ago, you needed a, a telecommunications engineer in order to make a, to make a phone call. Okay, we had. Uh, elevator operators, okay, the bell boys, because uh, people couldn't operate an elevator, okay, completely unheard of, but uh, 100 years ago, this was a crazy uh, magical technology, you know, that takes you and lifts you one, one floor higher, okay, and of course we had uh, computer operators, okay, and this is where the term comes from, as a uh, uh, similar to computer literacy, okay, we have now the type of uh, data literacy, okay. Um, if, uh, if you remember in uh, high school, uh, for uh, some of you there was uh, courses on computer literacy, okay. Just uh, imagine uh, all this huge amount of knowledge that we are carrying with us today in order to operate a, a computer, in order to function as a working member of uh, society, okay? Um, how does the internet work, you know, www.com? Um, what's a uh, directory, what's a, what's a file, you know? How do I use a USB stick? You know, all this huge amount of knowledge that uh, we just take for granted today, okay? My, my wife's uh, grandma, she went, uh, she's retired, she went, uh, her retirement home organizes uh, courses in computer literacy for, uh, you know, retirees about uh, how to look up things on Google or, or something, you know, how to order from Amazon, you know. So these are, um, this is a huge amount of knowledge that, uh, that we have and that is basically necessary. Think about what could you do today without a computer, okay? You wouldn't be a productive member of uh, society, you know, probably some uh, uh, craftsmanship uh, tasks, but uh, uh, normally, more than 50% work daily with computers, okay? And uh, so uh, I believe in the future, a similar situation will happen with uh, data, you know? In order to be a productive member of society, we will need to understand data and be working with data, okay? Uh, this is a picture that I found uh, just last week, okay? And uh, again, we see this technological marvel of uh, video telephony, and although they could uh, imagine this uh, amount of technology with electricity and antennas, they couldn't imagine it being done without a type of uh, operator, okay? And uh, now we know everybody can do this uh, out, of, out of their pocket, basically. So uh, this shows the, uh, the amount of progress, okay? So uh, today I will tackle two questions, okay? One is, uh, why is technological change so rapid and what are the consequences? And the uh, second one, how can we adapt to the use of uh, data and uh, analytics, okay? So uh, it will not uh, be uh, made, made the, uh, new information for uh, data professionals, but uh, maybe it will help you to understand how other people that are not data professionals What's the, uh, what's the typical struggle with this? So, uh, uh, maybe not the uh, main reason, but uh, I believe uh, one reason why technological change is getting so bad is because uh, we're just very good at doing things, okay? We're just very good at uh, running projects, okay? Who, is, uh, uh, who here is a, a project manager or a, or a team leader, okay? Please uh, raise your hands, okay? So you guys are doing a great job, okay? You guys are doing an amazing job, okay? And uh, so we have all these uh, all these possibilities today in terms of uh, uh, running projects and executing. So uh, some time ago, um, a project manager, his job was to manage the project, to get things done, and they spent all day, every day, worrying how do I get things done, okay? And we are getting so good at doing things, okay? Uh, things like uh, 
uh, agile um, uh, Scrum methodology, lean, lean workflow. Okay, we have uh, uh, all these um, uh, uh, the, all the technology we have at our leverage. Okay, if you want to the on-demand services, the type of uh, um, you can uh, start a, a supercomputer cluster, you know, on uh, Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services, you can start it uh, within 10 minutes, you know, out of your bedroom, you know, this amount of uh, possibilities that we have today. Uh, last time I was, I was traveling, uh, I went online, I booked my flight, I compared the hotels, okay. Um, 20 years ago, I, I went to a, to a travel agency, okay, they looked it up, they gave me catalogs, they, uh, uh, I, I didn't have the infrastructure to book a flight ticket, you know, but how, how do they book it, you know, so I had to go to a type of uh, uh, shop to buy a flight, okay, now that, nowadays I do it uh, on the subway, on my phone, so this type of, uh, uh, this type of uh, leverage that we can use, this type of uh, possibilities that we have today is um, we we didn't have before. Okay, so uh, just uh, again uh, think about uh, what you have to do in order to start a, a data science project, a server, or a something, or any kind of project. Okay, uh, you have a lot of uh, overhead that you have to put put in place, whereas. Uh, Nowadays, we are uh, more able to uh, one automate these things and to uh, command them uh, basically f out of our, our fingertips. Okay, so uh, project management is getting less about uh, actually executing the project, uh, or not only project management but management in general, and uh, it's getting more about. Uh, uh, deciding what to do. Why? Because we can do anything that we want, okay, very efficiently, very fast, and um, uh, so it's more about deciding what we want to do, okay? Uh, the, the term uh, executive, uh, you know, it's from a person that executes, okay, a certain uh, project, company, workflow, okay, but nowadays the executive is more of a decision maker, okay? So what we have to do, okay? Why? Because it's not only us, not only I am more capable, okay? But everybody else is more capable, okay? So all the competition, all the companies, they have this awesome methodology, technology, okay? So uh, everybody can uh, do these things uh, very quickly, efficiently. And the question becomes more um, what we are going to tackle, which project, okay? So. Uh, um, and uh, again, uh, uh, the, the job of the manager becomes more about uh, uh, deciding what to do and less about, uh, about doing. Okay? So uh, uh, why is uh, the, why decisions more important? Why is it so hard to get the right decision? Okay? Well, because uh, the future is uh, uncertain. Okay? We, if I could know... Uh, exactly what is going to happen if I do uh, task A and uh, I will have outcome B, okay? That would be very easy, there wouldn't be any kind of uh, skill or any kind of need for a type of uh, position or management position anymore, okay? Again, we have um, competitors, we have a lot of decisions, we have more decisions that we have to do, okay? If we did a decision before and then spent one year executing that, okay? If we now can execute in uh, one month, well, then in one month's time, we'll have a new decision to do, okay? So, uh, and also, or we can not do a decision, but, uh, you know, if we don't do one, then uh, nothing happens, or the competition will, will do the decision for us, or the market will do the decision for us, okay? So, uh, decisions are getting more and more important, okay? I heard uh, the uh, term of uh, decision science already, okay, similar to data science, but uh, decision science or uh, uh, decision analyst or something like that. So uh, we can all agree that uh, with data in an uncertain environment, we can, using our data, we can get uh, better decisions, okay? There are other ways to get better decisions as well, but uh, uh, we, one of them is certainly using data and uh, using it in the, in the right way, okay? So uh, data is becoming uh, more and more important, which is why we see this uh, 
uh, advent of uh, big data and uh, AI based decisions. Okay? So, um, uh, why is this decision making not based on data so far, or uh, why has there been uh, uh, basically not too much adoption of? Uh, I, I read something like uh, uh, ninety percent of uh, digital transformation projects uh, fail or never go beyond uh, proof of concept. Okay, uh, so why if it's so important and uh, so smart uh, to use data for our decisions? Why is it not being done? Well, one because of uh, culture change. Okay, the social change. It's slow. It takes time. A lot of the times it's not being uh, given the, the right attention, okay? So uh, uh, some companies think, aha, we'll get these uh, tools, we'll get a Hadoop or a Spark or uh, something, we'll get a cloud uh, data lake, and uh, it, will, it will work, okay? Uh, but uh, that's, that's not happening because people are not using it, okay? Uh, a second reason would be uh, we are, there is no, not too much pressure right now to change, okay? We always hear that, uh, aha, uh -huh, uh, if, uh, if uh, we don't apply digital technologies, uh, we'll be uh, replaced, okay, uh, by the competition or whatever, but uh, we are currently in the biggest bull run of, uh, uh, of, the, of the history, okay? So uh, stocks are only going up, there is, uh, uh, not too much uh, that companies, established companies, can do wrong in order to uh, to be replaced. Uh, so, um, so with this uh, economic boom, it's uh, not that much uh, need or incentive to uh, to change. Okay, and another reason is that uh, management doesn't uh, see it the the way uh, I just put it about using. Uh, uh, data for decisions uh, because decisions are getting more important than uh, than the doing part. Okay, so uh, that's one part of the uh, social cultural cultural change. Okay, so uh, and uh, so somehow uh, uh, we are it's our own fault. Okay, uh, all these buzzwords you hear AI, data science, big data. Okay, it's. Uh, um, there is a kind of uh, uh, idea that uh, big data will solve everything, okay? And once we get this big data, okay, we get a data warehouse or something, it doesn't solve everything, okay, magically. So uh, then uh, it uh, ends up the value proposition of a data-driven solution gets, uh, um, gets more under scrutiny, okay? So I, I, was, uh, I was reading a, an article which said, uh, um, something like uh, a computer recognize the uh, advent and demise of steam technology. Okay, and they show the graph about uh, you know in the 1800s there was a high uh, light in uh, steam technology in steam tur turbines and steam power, and then later on in the 1900s it uh, declined. Okay, and uh, I looked into it and I, I, I was seeing what did they do? They did a word count on uh, newspaper occurrences of uh, the word steam power, okay? So somehow from this very simple uh, thing, uh, it didn't stop the journalist to write, you know, computer recognized, uh, uh, you know, advancement and uh, decline of steam power, okay? But it's a very, very simple thing. So this kind of uh, uh, po populism uh, as maybe uh, uh, damage the value proposition a little bit. Okay, so uh, uh, we can uh, we can agree that uh, uh, data literacy is uh, required for uh, good decisions. Okay, what does it mean to be data literate? Okay, so uh, um, certainly uh, it, I think mainly it goes beyond the use of certain tools. Okay, you don't have to be. Uh, uh, type of um, a, a R programmer or a Python programmer or a, you know, so in order to be a data literate person. With data literacy, we are talking about uh, basic working knowledge, okay? Who, who here is a, is a computer programmer, you know? I couldn't program an app, okay, or anything like that, okay? But I can still use a computer very well, very efficiently, okay? So that's the same type of uh, using uh, a working knowledge of uh, 
using data, okay? It includes topics like uh, probability and uncertainty, okay? Experimentations, uh, some statistics, uh, and so on, you know, basic, uh, uh, basic ways not only to generate these reports or uh, do data science, but also to, uh, uh, to be able to read the reports, okay? And understand what you're getting from your data scientist, okay? So uh, our competency is increasing. So uh, if we look at uh, the competencies required, if, if I remember uh, 20 or maybe even 10 years ago, okay, on a, uh, on a, you had to put on your resume that you are familiar with Word and Excel, okay, and can use uh, PowerPoint or something, um, because uh, this was a new type of uh, requirement, okay, we have the uh, general requirements, okay, simple numeracy, simple math, okay, high school level math, okay, uh, financial literacy, so a manager, executive needs to know about the balance sheet, PNL, and, and so on, okay, basic accounting, computer literacy, we talked about, uh, they need to know about their sphere of work, okay, so a domain knowledge, so for example, an engineer or a HR professional or a marketing professional, they will have different uh, process literacies, okay, um, and so on. So, um, we are seeing, we will, in the future, we will need all this, plus other types of uh, literacies, okay, because uh, just because we can uh, read and write doesn't need, doesn't, just because it's more common doesn't mean that uh, we don't need it anymore. Okay, but it's getting more in the background. And in addition, we are needing uh, all, all these, uh, all these uh, skills as well, okay? Uh, probabilistic reasoning, experimentation, uh, the working of uh, how does the scientific method work, and so on, okay? So um, again, this will be in addition, in order to be valuable uh, to a company uh, in the future, okay? Um, and uh, I would say, this is uh, more uh, akin to, uh, excuse me, um, this has less to do, of course, uh, if you, uh, we are all saying uh, companies that don't apply data-driven technologies and AI-based algorithms, they will uh, not fare well in the, in the future, okay, it's true. But uh, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't compare it, uh, everybody knows about what happened to Nokia, okay. They uh, didn't jump on the smartphone uh, train. Uh, Kodak, uh, photography giant, okay, didn't adapt to uh, digital photography. I wouldn't compare it to those kind of uh, um, uh, examples because it's more about a product, a new product that you bring to the customer, okay? I would more compare it to uh, the type of uh, lean revolution, lean engineering, lean manufacturing that was uh, popularized by uh, uh, Toyota is sometime in the in the 70s. Um, why? Because it uh, represents an internal process that the companies need to internally go through and adapt. Okay, so uh, Toyota didn't come up with uh, new or better cars, but uh, they changed the way they manufacture cars. And all the other companies, uh, car making companies, had to adapt to this methodology in order to stay relevant, okay? Without doing something uh, new, a, a new type of product, okay? So it's more about the internal, uh, internal transformation, okay? So uh, now that we agree uh, that uh, we all need uh, data literate management, okay? How do we get there, okay? So uh, there are several steps uh, that I can recommend that uh, everybody can, uh, uh, can, uh, uh, can use, okay? So uh, one would be a type of uh, uh, formal training, okay? Either uh, some kind of um, uh, readings or even some uh, degrees or courses, okay? There are uh, uh, courses, okay? Alpha Zeta is offering uh, one type of them. Other uh, institutions are offering uh, other courses. Or even uh, se self-learning is very popular today and uh, very efficient, so it's uh, not stopping anyone. And uh, uh, again, we are talking about uh, non-expert working knowledge, okay, to basically know what to expect, okay? If I go to a restaurant, I get a menu, 
I know what I what I should order. Okay, I know if I uh, order a schnitzel, you know how will it be done uh, approximately. But I'm not a master chef that I could make just uh, just as good of a meal than in a in a in, in a very good restaurant. Okay. But I have certain restaurant literacy to know when I get a meal, is it good or is it not good? Okay, so um, so this is uh, what uh, what we are talking about. Okay, so there is a lot of uh, <coughs> opportunities for uh, for learning and even self study. Okay, um, uh, it's uh, you don't have to do it alone. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I would uh, I can recommend everybody to join this kind of uh, meetups we are today. Okay, they happen uh, everywhere from uh, Austria to uh, Australia. Okay, and uh, everywhere uh, in between. So uh, there is no uh, excuse. Okay, you can find the group uh, um, anywhere and uh, just joining these meetings. And uh, as you will see later in uh, networking. Uh, I'm sure there are some uh, a lot of uh, non-expert people uh, here as well. Okay, so uh, there is no need. Don't be shy to uh, to participate. Okay, and uh, uh, probably the most effective one would be to uh, uh, find a mentor. Okay, it can be somebody within your organization or outside of your organization. Okay, somebody you can. Uh, uh, talk to who can uh, lead you in the right way and uh, uh, po and uh, basically uh, not do the work for you, but tell you what what can be best done uh, in the in the future and in the next steps. Okay, so uh, and uh, more uh, more involved would be uh, getting into a kind of uh, job that requires uh, data driven methodologies. Okay. So trying to move into a the, the decision support role, okay, or a decision role, okay, and uh, doing it the the new way uh, with uh, uh, with a data driven tools, okay, using uh, data driven or uh, AI algorithms in order to uh, to support your um, your job, okay. So. Uh, this is uh, everything I have for today, and uh, if there are any questions uh, or uh, somebody wants to make some comments uh, for discussions, uh, uh, I'll be happy to, to take them. Thank you. So, are there any questions? Thank you very much for this really uh, interesting talk. I very much like this bird's eye view or the big picture, so we have provided it now, so very interesting, thanks. Thank you. Are any questions there in the audience? Otherwise, uh, later after the second talk or during the networking session, feel free to, uh, to approach me or, uh, yeah. yeah. Maybe I have a question, um, yeah. because you have mentioned this amazing path of, of technology, how it how it goes on and, and from record to record. Um, do, uh, and, and you also pictured at the beginning, okay, there is a new technology and then you need operators which can handle this technology and then, okay, then the consumers don't need any operator anymore. So, where do you think the data science stuff is right now in this process? Um, it's a very good question. Um, I think uh, we are kind of on the verge from going from an operator-assisted process to a type of uh, individual self-serve process, okay? And uh, don't ask me about the time frame, okay? I cannot tell you the next uh, two years or the next five years or something, but uh, there is a lot more uh, um, advent of uh, user of uh, nice tools for uh, of uh, UI based tools. Okay, if you think about uh, the uh, uh, the Microsoft Azure stack or uh, Tableau, for example, okay, that brought uh, basic visualization to uh, uh, be able to do it uh, on your own. Okay, and uh, I was I was reading a blog actually. Uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, saying that uh, you know, uh, in 2020, you shouldn't be uh, programming your uh, R scripts or Python scripts uh, anymore in a 
in a serious uh, or in a large uh, organization because uh, the type of maintenance and reproducibility required is uh, is um, is not there at the at the large scale organization. So these type of tools are getting more and more uh, prevalent and more and more capable. Okay, you can do things now even since the last two years. You know, you needed a, a type of um, a programmer to run certain algorithms because you had to program them yourselves. And now you have a more uh, off the shelf uh, off the shelf solutions, libraries, and. Uh, and even uh, point-and-click systems that are taking away this uh, this requirement. Okay, so uh, I think we are uh, we are getting there, and uh, uh, it, with that comes also a type of uh, danger. You know, if you think about the type of uh, auto ML algorithms, uh, automatic machine learning that uh, comes with the best results for you. Okay, I I ran it from uh, one of the suppliers and. Uh, it gave me some some suggestions, but uh, I, as a data scientist, uh, I checked one the algorithm and uh, two the results, and uh, found that okay, one of the suggested uh, uh, solutions was uh, uh, completely useless or not uh, statistically valid, basically. But it still came up with it. So uh, uh, if if I give it to somebody, uh, maybe a marketing manager, that's gonna base. Uh, one million dollar marketing campaign based on based on this. Okay, they need to have a very good uh, trust uh, trust in this type of uh, auto ML system. Okay, otherwise uh, you can spend one million dollars and not get the right uh, right results. So in this case, we are still in the assisted phase, but moving quickly to the type of self serve uh, sphere. I think. Would you Would you agree? Or, uh, yes. Very much at the start of this. Yes, so, yes. So, uh, well, absolutely. Yes. But it's going fast. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Well, I would have another one, but maybe. <laughs> that um, our educational system, universities, high schools and everything are somehow adapted to this rapid technology change or are we still lacking behind the need to um, kind of react soon because um, the next generation will, will have to learn even faster than we have to already. Right, um, I'm not sure I'm qualified to answer this since I haven't uh, dealt with uh, high school or university for a while and won't for the next uh, six years. So uh, um, I'm not sure what is the process or the courses as, as, as far as my uh, impression is. Um, I would say they are always uh, rather slow. There are certain initiatives, certain uh, uh, maybe certain teachers that are pushing certain uh, uh, processes or technologies, maybe certain uh, classes you can take, but uh, Overall, uh, probably not yet, and um, I think they are not ready. And especially with the amount of uh, uh, possibilities we are given, that uh, you know, you can you can have somebody in high school that is an expert, uh, uh, an expert uh, programmer. Okay, that is way beyond the level of any high school teacher. Uh, there was a conference where somebody, I think, a 14-year-old. Uh, Created a machine learning algorithm, okay, and presented it in front of uh, you know uh, 200 people. So uh, and that is something that uh, uh, I think uh, the current systems are not ready to uh, not really handle, but uh, to use. So this kind of uh, self self taught possibilities, which are, which are some great possibilities. Any additional questions? Okay, maybe. okay, so yeah, if anything comes up uh, later, just uh, let me know. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.